Hi everybody, um, I just wanted to do a quick little discussion on the future of food in India. Uh, this is a question I've been looking at and uh, thinking about for quite some time. Um, and basically I have been studying the entire earth and uh, basically wanted to look specifically at food situations. Um, I was getting a lot of emails and uh, just people questioning me about needing money for food. Um, particularly out of East Africa. Um, and then I realized to myself that uh, basically India has about 2 billion people and they are also uh, working on the food situation. And basically if you're looking at a large scale food uh, solution, uh, India may have that part of that solution uh, figured out. So I wanted to look in detail at that. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of details that we're going to kind of discuss here, but in general, uh, before we look at the big picture, I just wanted to zoom in and look at a particular uh, detail um, here. And so if you're not familiar with India, basically there's a major river here uh, that all converges in Bangladesh. Um, and essentially what happens is you need water to do farming and you need rain and all that other combination. Um, and then also you have to be concerned about the wildlife um, as well. So. Uh, you have to uh, kind of balance all these different factors. Um, so this is a very complicated uh, soil region that you're looking at here. Um, and I kind of just picked out a couple regions. Um, you know, I, I, there's this uh, little pocket here that, uh, you know, essentially what's been happening is that a lot of the rhinos have been moving up into uh, the northeastern uh, end of uh, India. Um, so they're basically needing to try to figure out what to do with a lot of the wildlife um, because uh, they're trying to compete with uh, real farmland and clean water. Um, and of course, as you get further and further down this river, uh, the water gets more and more polluted. Uh, but as you get closer up into the mountains, the water stays cleaner and then many of the wildlife and animals can live there. So uh, as a consequence, uh, when you're trying to think about uh, food in India, uh, you have to be careful because sometimes uh, at the edge of these mountain ranges, it becomes a very, very critical habitat for the wildlife. Uh, but the main zone that I would say is particularly interesting in India uh, to think about farming is actually uh, this part uh, just outside of Calcutta. Uh, if you're familiar with Bangladesh, Bangladesh is mostly this big flood zone, the blue zone here. Uh, but uh, the better farmland is kind of this uh, brown uh, or orange zone. Um, and then there's some uh, kind of pink areas. But India kind of has this uh, dilemma because most of the best farmland is over here in Myanmar, Burma on the eastern side in the green there. And then I did a dark green zone here kind of indicating another potential interesting area to keep for just for wildlife. Um, so in general, these flood zones, we have to be careful because uh, uh, particularly on these green sides, uh, it gets close to the mountains, and then that means you can have clean, fresh water uh, for the animals and wildlife, as well as for the farmland. Um, but uh, in general, India is perhaps most complicated farming and most interesting farming is in this uh, pink region. Um, a lot of the standard farming is kind of up in these uh, kind of a yellowish, uh, brownish color regions, which is uh, where most of the Indian farmland is. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of uh, thinking about the future of farming, uh, even where I live out on the West Coast, uh, there's a lot of farming done up in the hills. Uh, it, you know, you have to be careful with the streams um, because of the uh, wildlife and things like that. Um, so certainly India has a lot of work to do uh, in terms of uh, thinking about how to clean up the water stream. Um, that A lot of that work can probably be done uh, in this pink zone here. Uh, to think about how to clean up uh, the water in Bangladesh uh, because this water flow doesn't really go from the uh, north it actually is coming from a separate mountain range um, so it's a little bit easier to keep separated and find out what the exact cause is of uh, water pollution uh, that might eventually uh, help the farmland. Um, so in general, when we look at food in India, um, it's kind of a complicated situation. Um, I drew a couple pictures here just to kind of see, but this green circle is essentially the Indian region. Um, and this blue circle up here uh, is the area uh, where most of the food and most of the people actually live. 
Um, so <clears throat> what we see in Africa is that most of the problems with food are kind of in these purple regions. Um, and then also uh, like Sudan, uh, there's just uh, millions and millions of refugees um, kind of heading down south uh, into Uganda. <clears throat> and then also right here in uh, Niger. Uh, on the west coast of Africa. So, but there is a pocket here um, that looks fairly safe, uh, kind of uh, near uh, Tanzania, um, just off the coast of Madagascar there, but um, that uh, basically looks relatively safe uh, from some of the problems um, coming from uh, kind of the uh, Northern Africa, Middle East. Um, so basically what happens here is that there is a lot of different uh, you know, essentially a lot of the food needs to be imported into India. Um, so from my understanding, uh, the data may be totally wrong. Um, and actually, India may be importing a lot more food than we realize. Um, just based on the soil maps, uh, you can see. Um, but, uh, but then again, the satellite imagery shows uh, quite a lot of land available, uh, at least in the north. Um, but with the amount of people they have, uh, it makes it kind of questionable the information but so what I just circled here is uh, a couple places uh, that are perhaps no-go zones for India in terms of importing food um, Indonesia so a lot of food is basically coming out of uh, Thailand um, and also there's kind of this little pathway coming up through uh, the corner of India um, meaning uh, this uh, area just north of Bangladesh actually is a critical food zone uh, for importing uh, food into India uh, that actually might become uh, quite contested with China. Um, but, uh, you know, it is uh, uh, pretty much uh, super important, uh, these high mountain regions uh, for Indian agriculture and also for import and export. Uh, there is a major, uh, I think, highway being planned and some different things uh, in that uh, region in the Northeast there. Um, but uh, in general, uh, this means that a lot of the food, essentially in the future, uh, you know, how they work with uh, Myanmar, uh, Burma, uh, is super important for the food uh, situation in India. Um, and uh, essentially how uh, India can help uh, the rest of the Middle East. Um, if you look at the rest of this map, um, Europe looks fairly uh, stable for agriculture, um, but, uh, you know, and then Turkey kind of being on that edge there uh, of uh, possible farmland, um, and then kind of this valley region uh, heading into Kuwait. Um, but uh, the Middle East actually uh, is uh, very difficult for food, and there's a lot of people there. Um, and that question of how to work with Essentially, Russia, I would say, uh, and just looking at the transportation routes into there, um, I, I don't know exactly how this would relate to uh, Eastern Africa. There's a lot of uh, refugees that kind of travel, I would say, along the coast of Western India and then uh, Oman and Yemen and then down heading into uh, uh, the Horn of Africa there. But uh, certainly a big uh, discussion in terms of food. Uh, soil map for uh, the earth uh, and kind of look at that for India <clears throat> we see that uh, there's actually uh, quite a lot of not so great land in India um, and it's okay uh, but there's also a lot of really good land as well so in general what you see here is in the Congo uh, in the jungle um, that's not really that farmable uh, but it's great land um, <clears throat> So the best farmland is kind of this uh, in-between areas, uh, kind of uh, not quite uh, uh, jungle farmland, but uh, not quite uh, rocky hills either. So you kind of have these pink areas. Um, so if you zoom in here, you can kind of see these are the uh, global classifications of the farmland. Um, and you can kind of see uh, this kind of like pink and then some of this browner area. And then this is kind of like flood zone uh areas uh so you can kind of get an idea for uh where the food is coming from uh in india uh, and it's actually quite a lot uh can be farmed up in uh up into these regions in here 
uh, and then as well as along here, and then you can see some kind of like floodplain areas where they also probably do some irrigation and farming. Um, and you can see some farming probably done right up into the uh, Himalayas there. Uh, and you can kind of zoom in here and see uh, some more details. Uh, but this is a great map uh, that you should for sure take a look at. Uh, so we're going to start this discussion uh, talking about the water supply in India. And this is a map here. Uh, I'm a little bit familiar with how uh, underground water works. Um, believe it or not, oh, quite a lot of water comes from underground. Um, and that basically means that uh, if you study the details of it, you'll find that most of these underground water supplies are near uh, rivers. And the major river in India is actually in the north and then heads down to Bangladesh. So most of the water um, is actually, the underground water is actually located, um, surprisingly there's a little pocket in Pakistan and then another pocket just before you hit uh, Bangladesh. Um, and then a couple interesting pockets kind of up in the hills there that you see some uh, water supply. Uh, but uh, there is quite a lot of people here, so uh, you have to also look at the uh, demand map as well, um, which I will try to show you in a second here. Uh, so the uh, water demand map is basically just totally different, um, and it's also based on, uh, basically it's, there's a lot of crops uh, as well as uh, just human usage, but believe it or not, the crop usage is quite a bit more than uh, the human usage. So this map, you can kind of see that uh, quite a lot of the water usage is actually on the northwest side of India, whereas the water uh, supply uh, underground and with the stream is also uh, towards Bangladesh. Um, but you can also see some other pockets of pretty significant uh, water usage. Um, there's also another map uh, that I'd like to show you uh, called the water stress map, which is super helpful as well. Uh, so this last map is the water stress map, um, and basically it's difficult to estimate the stress, but uh, if you take the uh, supply minus the demand, you can basically get a stress map. Um, and it kind of links up with those two maps that you saw before, um, but this is an uh, estimate that they made here. Uh, so the modern food era for India really didn't start until about uh, the 1990s uh, or really 1970s. You can see that on the export side, uh, perhaps most of the food was just uh, uh, either imported or just grown locally until about the 1970s. Um, but really, uh, the major change started around 2000. Uh, 2005 uh, when India started to uh, produce a lot of food so I've been studying the Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity and uh, here is kind of their criteria for what the main <clears throat> exports are for food um, in India and uh, obviously there's exports and imports so let me get you the uh, imports graph really quick uh, so on the import side, I was very surprised to see a 30% uh, of all their imports being nuts and uh, dried foods. So that means that uh, a lot of like storage types of foods are being imported um, into India. Um, and that may be just because of uh, long-term storage and being able to buy food. Um, and store it for a while. I was also surprised how much, uh, in general, vegetables, but in general, you could say about 50% of all the food is dried foods. Um, and then I also saw quite a lot of fruits and vegetables being imported, and that's kind of odd. Uh, you'd think that India would have, uh, you know, the warmer climate and they'd have vegetables and, uh, excuse me, fruits, but uh, maybe just it takes up a lot of land space, so they're not able to grow that, but. I would think that maybe they would be able to uh, grow some trees in their backyards and be able to have uh, some fruits um, not traditionally farmed uh, in other ways. Maybe the government might support that or uh, local community organizations. The map that I like to look at is it shows kind of the cool uh, mountain ranges and you can see approximately where some of the farmland is. Now it gets drier as you head out into this region here, um, but essentially you can kind of see uh, there is some little pockets of possible farmland uh, and uh, food and agriculture essentially in here. Um, the west coast of India has a kind of this little mountain range along here um, that you can see, uh, but 
basically this could give you a basic feel for uh, what the culture might be like uh, in terms of uh, livability and also farmland uh, in the already uh, this is a Google Earth view with the climate classification um, and I just wanted to show you what that looked like uh, primarily for India um, but you can also look at this for the rest of the world um, there are ways to kind of change this map slightly uh, you can download it and then uh, kind of change the opacity so you can also see some of the actual satellite imagery in addition to where the climate is so you can kind of use that combination to see what you need anyway i hope you've enjoyed this study of food and agriculture uh, for india in specific uh, there is a lot of problems for food around the world and uh you know i was inspired just to uh work on something like this because i saw the problems in africa and then i thought uh well maybe a lot of africans have a lot of land actually and maybe they can help solve the problems in india um unfortunately the soil data and most of the data here doesn't really even show anything about that um but a lot of indians are actually moving to africa and the east coast or southern africa um and finding great lives there as well um but uh, certainly uh, that wasn't uh, discussed very much in this topic here but uh, super interesting uh, to think about and hopefully uh, this will help you uh, think about and solve a lot of the food problems